Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. She was once dubbed Australia's worst serial killer after the deaths of her four children. Now Kathleen Folbig is a free woman after spending two decades in jail. In a miscarriage of justice case reminiscent of the wrongful conviction of Lindy Chamberlain, the New South Wales Attorney General has pardoned the 55-year-old after new scientific evidence emerged. Today, ABC background briefing reporter Rachel Brown on Kathleen Folbig's freedom and what it says about the judicial system. Today, 20 years after being found guilty of killing her four children, Kathleen Folbig is pardoned and has been released from jail. Rachel, this is an extraordinary decision by the New South Wales Attorney General Michael Daly. He's pardoned Kathleen Folbig and she was released from jail immediately, as soon as he made that decision. A momentous decision. Well, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, Thank you for coming this morning. I found out about the press conference half an hour before it happened. I texted Tracy Chapman, who is Kathleen Folbig's best friend. Tracy Chapman said that she didn't even know um, about the press conference. Uh, This morning at 9.30, I met with the governor. I recommended that the governor should exercise the raw prerogative of mercy and grant Ms Folbig an unconditional pardon. The governor agreed. Ms Folbig has now been pardoned. Tracy Chapman, she's really important in this story, isn't she? Because she is one of the people that fought for Kathleen over this 20 years she spent behind bars. She's been trying to free her. Yeah, Tracy Chapman is Kathleen's oldest, one of Kathleen Folbig's longest, oldest friends. We've known each other since we were in primary school. I suppose we were around five and a half, maybe six. That's kind of when I remember. Tracy has been campaigning for decades for her friend and may even know more about the, you know, machinations outside than Kathleen does on the inside, to be honest. But Tracy Chapman has been working with lawyers, with parliamentarians, just trying to educate the public about this case and what she sees as, you know, a massive miscarriage of justice. Do you remember the guilty verdict? Yes. Are you in the room? No, I wasn't in the room, but I just, I remember just crying. I couldn't believe it. There was not a flicker of doubt that she didn't do it? No, Mm. no. I just couldn't imagine Kath doing what they said. Okay, so Rach, I know you've done a lot of work and reporting on Kathleen Folbig's case. So before we look further into why she's been pardoned, why she's walked out of jail yesterday, let's look back at why she was jailed in the first place. And this relates, of course, to the death of four of her children. That's right. She was convicted in 2003. The first one died at 19 days. The eldest made it to 19 months, but there were four deaths within a decade. And it was put to the jury that perhaps the only way that that could have happened, it was at Kathleen's own hand. Now, that was largely based on an old British tenant, Meadows Law, that follows one child death in a family is a tragedy, two is suspicious, and three or more must be murder unless proven otherwise. So that was a tenant that pervaded Mm. the tone of that trial, that because the prosecution couldn't come up with any other reason why these children died, it must have been murder, even though there was no evidence to suggest that. There was no signs of smothering, there was no signs of violence. Okay, and and during that trial, her diaries were a key part, weren't they? Correct. Her diaries were said to be, by the judge, virtual admissions of guilt. The Supreme Court heard today how a woman accused of smothering her four children kept a diary detailing her dark moods. Now, she had passages in the diary like, I snapped my cog, as in she Mm -hmm. got angry at one of the children, or Sarah left with a bit of help. Now, she has since said that that bit of help was she meant God because she was a spiritual woman, not that she did it. And these diaries are a record of just how depressed and how much struggle I was having and all of the issues that go with that. A judge decided, I know how to interpret these diaries as, I think, a 77-year-old man. He didn't want expert evidence 
into those diaries. He said, no, I know how to interpret them, and he interpreted them as virtual admissions. She went to trial and she was convicted of the murder of three of the children and the manslaughter of the fourth child and sentenced to 25 years in jail. And since that initial trial, there were inquiries, weren't there? There were appeals. She had tried before to be released. She's always maintained her innocence and she did have appeals. Are you responsible for the death of Caleb? (laughs) No. Are you responsible for the death of Patrick? (laughs) No. No. Are you responsible for the death of Sarah? No. And are you responsible for the death of Laura? No. Weirdly, unfortunately for Kathleen, she had all these appeals and so by the time new evidence came to light, new scientific evidence, which, you know, we can dig into, she'd already exhausted her appeals processes and in Australia there's no real mechanism to reopen a case, even with new evidence, if you have already exhausted your appeals. Mm -hmm. So she was in a really tricky position. Okay, so she's failed in these previous appeals. She's bombed out in those and she remains in jail. So what did spark the latest rethink? What then has happened since those appeals? Science moves a lot faster than the law. A team of researchers were looking at a genetic mutation in the CALM2 gene. Now, that's a gene that modulates the flow of protein to the heart and can cause cardiac arrhythmias. Now, the scientists looked into this and they did give evidence at an earlier inquiry in 2019, but the research wasn't finished yet. So the judge, as I understand it, didn't take it with the weight that perhaps it probably should have been taken back Mm -hmm. then. That research was then published, I think, nine months later in Europace. But that research found that this gene mutation could lead to cardiac arrhythmia. Okay, so these scientists seem to suggest that Kathleen Folbick might have passed on some sort of mutation to these children. That's correct. She has the mutation and they thought that she might have passed it on to her two daughters. So based on that science, when after it was published, a second inquiry was ordered and that was headed up by Tom Bathurst. What do we want? Justice for Kathleen Folbick! When do we want it? Do we want it? Now! (laughs) And this is interesting because it was largely at the push and behest of scientists. Now, scientists rarely agree on anything, but here we have a group of more than 150 scientists, including three Nobel laureates, who've signed a petition saying we think you need to look at this because this genetic mutation most likely killed Kathleen Folbig's two daughters. Therefore, the Crown case, which followed that four deaths must have been four murders, that collapses like Skittles. We have justice on our side. We have truth on our side. We have 155 of the world's best science and medical experts also on our side. Wow. Okay. How amazing. Right. So there's another inquiry and it's now considering this evidence from these scientists. So what's that inquiry now found? Where are we up to now? So the scientists told the inquiry that that gene mutation has a, I think, a 95% lethality. So if you've got the mutation, it will most certainly kill you. Mm -hmm. That latest investigation, Rach, as well, the, the diaries, they came back up again, didn't they? They did. And this was, interestingly, the first time that experts were able to give their opinion to an inquiry or to the court as to what these scribblings in these diaries might have meant. And so initially the jury was told, you know, they were virtual admissions of guilt. And now this year we have experts telling the court, well, this is just normal motherhood trauma. Mm -hmm. She's lost four children. You know, this is the place where she tries to pour out some of that confusion, some of the trauma. Um, And her saying, I feel like I've been a bad mother is not saying, you know, is not a confession that she murdered them just that she felt on some level she must have done something wrong for the world to have taken away her four children. I felt that I deserved whatever bad things are happening in my life because of how much of a failure I didn't myself to be. Yeah, okay. So the New South Wales Attorney General, Michael Daly, he's now granted Kathleen Folbig a pardon in one of the most significant cases since Lindy Chamberlain. What's he said, Rach? What has he found... 
Yeah, so he has been presented with a summary, I understand, of Tom Bathurst's findings. And that summary says, I'll just read it to you, I've reached the view that there is reasonable doubt as to the guilt of Ms Volbig for each of these offences. And so considering Mr Bathurst's conclusion that he is firmly of the view that there is reasonable doubt as to Ms Volbig's guilt, I consider that his reasons establish exceptional circumstances of the kind that weigh heavily in favour of the grant of a free pardon. Sam, this is truly, and I mean this, and this is one of the cases in my 21 years as a journalist has fascinated me, Mm. that how did we get here, you know? And I think a lot of Australians will have to do a lot of soul searching about this. There are parallels with this case and the Lindy Chamberlain case that women, if they don't grieve in a particular way, Mm. society assumes that they must be guilty. And we saw it with Chamberlain, we've seen it with Folbig. Chamberlain only had a few years in jail. Kathleen Folby, 20 years in jail, and she's been saying the whole time that she didn't do it. So it'll be interesting to see the discussions that Australia will have to have, that the legal fraternity will have to have, and what options are available to her now. You know, she's a middle-aged woman. She doesn't have a job. She'll be living with her best friend. This has hung over her for the most of her life. Yeah, not to mention that she lost her four children. She still has a battle to go if she wants to quash the conviction, doesn't she? And then there's that matter of compensation. So it's certainly not over, is it, for Kathleen Folbig? No, officially it needs to go back to the Court of Appeal for any convictions to be quashed. That's not something, as I understand, that the Attorney General can do. And then it'll be interesting to see what kinds of options are available to her for compensation. But as you said, she was a woman, she was a mother who was convicted in 2003, and not only did she have to grieve for her four children in jail, but she also had the country and some of the press label her as Australia's worst serial killer. I also think it'll be hard coming out into society, and and I know I've spoken to Tracy Chapman about this and how how they manage that, you know, reintegration and coming to terms with who she is now as a person in the world. I asked her um, what she wanted and she wanted a T-bone steak. So um, she wants roast vegetables. She wants to have a bath. She hasn't had a bath for 20 years and she really wants to wear a proper pair of pyjamas. So we just can't wait to try and be normal. Rachel Brown is a reporter with Background Briefing. You can listen to her investigation into Kathleen Folbig's case on the ABC Listen app from March the 20th last year. It's now up to the inquiry head, Tom Bathurst, to refer the case to the Court of Criminal Appeal to consider whether the convictions should be quashed. Kathleen Folbig could then sue the state of New South Wales for compensation or seek a payment. This episode was produced by Veronica App App, Flint Duxfield and Sam Dunn, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is Stephen Smiley. I'm Sam Hawley. To get in touch with the team, please email us on ABC News Daily at abc.net.au. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to listen to more free podcasts or download the ABC Listen app and stream ad-free.